Hi, I'm Trent from TrailsOffRoad.com. If you've watched our channel for a while, you know that I'm the stock truck guy who drives the stock Otako up trails it's not expected to do. But this year, the stock Otako has lost its title. And it all started with this Banff plate bumper. Now don't get me wrong, I'm still a huge advocate for wheeling your stock vehicle. The Tacoma comes from the factory with impressive approach angles, but more than once over the years I've been worried about bashing the stock plastic bumper cover. Plus, I have been wheeling the Tacoma for over 10 years, and I'm way overdue for a real self-recovery plan. I needed a winch, which means I needed a winch-capable bumper. I needed a BAMP. Now, of course, everyone knows that BAMP stands for bad ass What? Oh, Bay Area Metal Fab. Well, it's still pretty bad ass. Now, because the majority of trails that I have mapped for trails off-road are in the high country of Colorado, most of my trail time in the spring and early summer is spent finding out where the snow stops and how far up trails are open. So as you can imagine, there are a few places where a front-mounted winch can get me over a hard spot. More often than not, I am as far up the trail as I can get, so if I get stuck, I need to winch backwards. My plan then was to get a receiver hitch in the front instead of a winch plate, and then use a removable winch cradle that I could hook up at either end. Granted, winch cradles are heavy and the wiring is more complicated, but for me, it was just the tool that I needed. Being able to put the winch on the back also means that when I start to slide off the trail and get into a bad spot, I can winch my back end back up onto the trail. I called up Jerry at Banff, and he said it would be no problem to swap in a receiver. Now between my custom order and Corona and supply chain issues, it did take a while for the bumper to show up. But when it did, man, I was pumped. This thing is seriously stout. The craftsmanship is top notch and every weld was perfect. My next concern was weight. The stock Otaka was not gonna fare well with an extra 200 plus pounds added to the front. I went ahead and ordered an old man emu suspension to cope with the extra weight, but it turns out the BAMP is strong and light. The website listed at 140 pounds, and mine arrived at a svelte 127. So after upgrading the suspension and adding the bumper, the stock Otako stands an inch and a half taller than the leveling lift that I already had on it. That's almost three inches over stock. So ends the stock Otako. Well, what am I going to call it now? How about uh, Taco Supreme? I ordered my bumper bare steel. I learned a long time ago that good quality rattle can primer and paint holds up to most anything you can throw at it. Plus, it's a lot easier to touch up than powder coat. But to be honest, with such a complex shape as a plate bumper, some rattle can experience is required. My old double row light bar would not fit in the new bumper, so it got a new home. Instead, I ordered this 32 inch slim single row bar from Cali Raised. The only problem was that the included Allen style hardware doesn't work. But after a quick trip to the hardware store, I got it figured out, and it fits like a glove. The installation instructions from Banff are pretty basic. No pictures or diagrams, but the install is so simple, I didn't feel like I needed any more than I got. I was already familiar with the process of removing the stock bumper, and the new bumper install is pretty straightforward. Banff recommends three people to install the bumper, so I invited a couple of buddies over. Okay. I haven't been working out, so okay, this is as bad as I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> like I said, the bumper is relatively light, so it's less about the extra muscle and more about having three sets of eyes on things to make sure you don't bash your fenders or your headlights. I thought I might want my floor jack to take the weight while we got it lined up, but even that wasn't really necessary. You will need at least a couple of sets of arms in order to get some of the nuts and bolts tightened down. And it doesn't hurt if at least one of those sets of arms is less Popeye and more olive oil. It's important to leave a good gap between your bumper and your fenders. I'll show you why in a minute. I use some 3 8 inch plywood scraps. This not only gives you a good guide, it protects your fenders in case the bumper slips while you're getting everything level. The reason you need a good fender gap is that when you're wheeling, your truck's frame and body flex. And if you don't have enough room, the bumper will flex right up into the fender and do some body damage. Now I probably could have gone with more than 3 eighths of an inch, but time will tell. So there you have it. The Banff plate bumper looks awesome. It's incredibly stout, yet relatively light. The center approach angle on the <laughs> Taco Supreme is a little bit better than stock, but at the wheels, it is insane, allowing me to fearlessly take on obstacles I never would have tried with the stock bumper. 
Most importantly, I now have a way to self-recover when I'm out there checking snow lines so I can do status updates for you guys on trailsoffroad.com. Stop by trailsoffroad.com and we'll see you on the trail. But this Banff plate bumper. This one, this one right here. If you've watched our channel for a while, that you, that the Stocko Taco stands almost an eh, nah, nah, bleh, 200 plus pounds added to the front. What are you trying to say?